Welcome everyone to another episode of the Wood from the Trees podcast. Uh, I hope you're all keeping well wherever you're watching or listening in the world. Uh, if you're liking what we're doing and you want to support the podcast, if you go to patreon.com forward slash the Wood from the Trees. Not going to say podcast <laughs> at the end of it. And for the price of a pint, you can help us grow and support the podcast. Uh, really love what we're doing, but we don't have a network behind us and we don't have sponsors. So, you know, for the price of that little pint or uh, one of those fancy venties, you can get uh, extra episodes uncensored. You won't see it anywhere else. You can get involved in the show and you can take part in it and there's prizes to be won. So I appreciate the absolute fucky. Enjoy the episode. <laughs> Right, Johnny, the man, the myth, the legend. Come on, Dave, how's it going? God, I'm trying to get you on a long time. Davey, you're after hunting me down a long time. Like, I thought my brother Sean was hard to get on. You were fucking worse. <laughs> Mount Melick, man. Gosh, right. Born and bred. Born and bred, 1968. Jesus, 1968. Was there anything memorable going on in 1968? Do you remember anything memorable Jesus, about your date of no. birth? No. No? Not in 68, anyway. Anyway, Johnny, big family, small family. Uh, mother and father, five sisters. And you were the baby? I was the baby. Ah, spoiled rotten. Ah, well, I was, yeah, I suppose. Did you enjoy school, John? School and I didn't go on great hall. No? No. Did you do the whole of it? Did you go to sex? Yes, school? I didn't. I went to St. Patrick's Boys National School in Mullick. And after that, I went to the tech. Yeah. And, um... Did you like school? No. Hated it? <gasps> Hated it, because it was just it was no good in it at all. And did you stay long in secondary school? Um, maybe a year or less. Go away. Mother got me a job up in um, Shields' Bakery. Do what? In the confectionery end of it. Like uh, when you say confectionery, is that like buns, cakes? Buns and cakes, soda bread, apple tarts, eclairs. What age were you? Queen cakes. Only about 11 or 12? Um, so I was about 15, coming 15. Um, like what was your job every day? In there, uh, uh, greasing down trays. What time? In the morning? Or did you start at six? Could be finished maybe at two. In the day? In the day, yeah. Hard work? Uh, uh, just you kept going, yeah. The head confection was Paddy O'Toole and Betty Fox. How many was working in there? And Katrina time? Delaney and myself. That was it, yeah. That was it? Yeah, I was supposed to, to clean her upper. And um, come here, if I was working somewhere like that now, would you be eating everything around you now? You wouldn't. You see the way it's made, you wouldn't. Ah, stop. Don't tell I'm me that. I'm telling you. Talk to me. I'm telling you, boy. Tell me, Johnny. I'm telling you now. Oh, are you greasing up yeah. that chair, <laughs> really? <laughs> Particularly the, the eggs. When they came to eggs. Why? They used to get the eggs uh, in a frozen block. What? In a box, yeah. And uh, you put mixed into up. it. All mixed up in a square box. And you'd be put into a tray that evening. The following morning, they'd be tarred out. Well, that's... Like Stink. broken up eggs? Yeah. All frozen? Yeah. Then you let them tie out the night before? They'd be all tied out and you can mix them on and you'd be using them for making sponges or cakes or... They stink? Oh, stop, yeah. Broken. Oh, jeez, Johnny. Honest to God, yeah. But great job. You'll learn a herbal in it. what you learn? Like making uh, sponges. Yeah. Swiss rolls now. Making this chocolate Swiss rolls. So did it teach you how to bake when you went home then? With fresh eggs? <laughs> <laughs> well, you wouldn't do it because you'd have to seen enough of it yeah. there all day. But... Great work to see how it's done. So how long did you stay at that? I was there for about two years until they'd uh, closed. Irish Pride bought it, I suppose bought it to close it. And um, God, I remember when it was, when they closed. I was only getting uh, uh, 26 pounds a week. Fuck. And I'd never had it in it. In the length of time you were there? In the length of time I was there. But uh, finishing up anyhow, Joe Shield said to me, uh, never say you worked here. And uh, I didn't take any heed by it. I was waiting to get me £26 and I uh, went on home. My mother said to me, how did you go on? And I told her what he said. Go back up there now, she says, and ask him what he meant. By saying not to say you worked there, but you did not do your work right. Or what? Because hmm. I went back up on the bike <laughs> and uh, looked for Joe Shields and he came out to me. And say, your mother sent me back up to know why you would have said I didn't work here. Ah, he says some little things we're supposed to do when the work hadn't been done and little things might mean in place. Just forget about it, he says. Because I went home and you told mother this. 
She wasn't happy with that. Come on, she says, we're going up to Paddy Dowling. The Gandhi. Who's Paddy Dowling? The Gandhi Dowling. He was the, <laughs> the, <laughs> he was the union man in the hospital in Montmelly. Yeah. And he went up to Paddy anyhow, and she told Paddy the whole story. And Paddy asked me how much it was on, and I told him. He said to me, did you ever have any holidays or days off? No, I said, we'd nothing. So he sat writing, wrote this great page of a letter, and put it into an envelope. I'll never forget the, I'll never forget the address on it. Mr. Matt Merrigan, Union Hall, Dublin. So he says to me, go up the shields and show him this. And if he pays you your money, burn the letter. <laughs> if he doesn't pay you, buy a stamp and post it. So Shields told me to call up the following week anyway. And um, This is after you gave him the letter. I didn't give him it. He just showed him the, the address on it. Yeah. And he went up the following tourist anyway, and he gave me £120. So we burnt the letter. Was that a lot of money then? God, it was. We were delighted. When home and my mother went up the white shop and bought Paddy down 100 cigarettes. <laughs> he was a smoke. Great. And, yeah, God, it was great now. Where did you go after that? That closed in. Then I went to uh, Father Jim in Port Leash, that Mary's workforce. Otherwise known as the Smurfs in Port Leash. The Smurfs? Yeah. What did the, they do there? The, uh, used to make washing up liquid. Super suds, if you tell it, remember it. There was a factory like that in Port Leash? Yeah. Father Jim O'Connell. Um, he made super suds, disinfectant, bleach, toothpaste. In one factory? He did. Straight across from the, from the church there in Port Leash. And he also was into recycling. Uh, cardboard. And glass. And uh, he was going to the pubs around the leash, collecting the bottles out of the pubs. The green glass, white glass and brown had to be all kept separate. So did you collect them separate or did you collect them together? We'd and separate, separate them when we'd be crushing them. Bring them all back and, and uh, crush them. Did you crush them there? Crush them in Port Leash. You had that like a, it was like a pulper. You just throw them into it and it'd break up and it didn't. Safety goggles on all the time? Oh, definitely. <laughs> Working here to hell of. <laughs> and you're only a young man. That's the truth. Don't and, uh, fall into the crusher, Johnny. <laughs> that's jizz. And he also done cardboard. It was a bale cardboard and the bale maybe could be half ton weight bales. So what do you do with the glass? The glass, jizz, I tell you about the glass. You used to bring it to Dublin on a tractor. A tractor? I did. You did? I did. What kind of tractor? Uh, I don't think there was a 50k box in that no, time. Right, right. The first time we went up, uh, I followed Ollie Bartley from Port Leash. Ollie uh, had uh, the Ford 4000. There was one door on it. And uh, I had a Ferguson 165. All the way to Dublin. Up we went down into Rings End, Irish glass and bottles. And uh, we, had, we weren't allowed to go on the motorway at the time. We had to go into Monastreven and into Kildare, into Long Newbridge way. and into Nace. So this morning we were going anyway and went to Nace to the traffic lights, turn left, on down the town, all these tailboard opened. So you can imagine what that was like. Glass everywhere. Glass everywhere. So uh, I had a cousin in Nace, <laughs> a guard. The guard the station was only on the main street at the time. PJ Raycroft, Lord of Mercy on him. I went in looking for him, thinking he'd be there. He wasn't there. So I told him then what was after happening and they gave me a shovel. When I came back out, Ollie was after having a shovel and a brush on me. Gathered it up, and now we went on to Dublin. Brian, the two lot of glass. How long did it take to drive a tractor up there? Five hours up and five oh, hours for back. for fuck's sake, Johnny. That's the truth, and yeah. Where, what about diesel? We have to bring in, we used to fill the tractors with diesel, and we bring five gallons away oh, as well. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> That's the truth, yeah. Man, is the time we've done it. That sounds horrific. That's the throw of God we did. Your ears would be ringing when you get home. Oh, Ten hours that. driving on a 135. 165. 165. Well, yeah. well, it's not much better now, Johnny. <laughs> but it were great times. And did you get paid well for that? Oh, God, we did. I got more than I was getting out with shields. Fuck. Yeah. Just we did. And how long did you stay there? I stayed there for... Uh, well, I, I learned to drive then, you see, when I got, in, got to my father Jim's to drive a tractor. So a friend of mine in the moment, uh, Tony Coss, Lord of mercy on Tony, um, he was a great digger driver. Hmm. And Tony was always asking me, uh, would I come to Hinch? 
I'd say sure I might, yes, I might, yeah. And he kept asking me this for a few weeks, maybe more. So this evening I was at home and you in the back kitchen, uh, having a bit of a wash and shave. Not come to the door, and mother went to the door. And um, it was Tony. He, she, he says, is John there? Oh, he is, she says. She says, I want to see him. So mother came out to me and said, there's someone at the door looking for you. I went down, here was Tony. He says, Finn Hinch is out in the car, he wants to talk to you. So he came out anyway, and uh, Fint was there, and he's asking, would I, know, would I go and drive for him? I'd say, I oh, will say, yeah. Well, see, the man I'm with, at the minute, he's Father Jim. I'll have to give him a fart in his nose. Why was he called Father Jim? Because he was a priest. Would you fuck off? He was a priest. You don't just not tell me that. I'm telling you. He was a priest that owned a factory that made bubbles, Father, toothpaste. Father Jim, yeah. Father Jim O'Connell. And did all that money go back into the community? The crow, he had a great lot of people employed. He gave great employment around Port Leash. Was he a wealthy man? I wouldn't say he was wealthy, but he gave great employment. Everyone got their wages every week. Was he strict? Uh, no, I wouldn't think he was, no. Very fair. And was he walking around the factory with the, the priest uniform on and everything? Uh, sometimes if he do these daily jobs, he'd be gone out. When he'd come back then, he'd often work away with his and... Often did, yeah. He was great now, great man. Fuck. Yeah. So he went out to Hinch and he asked you to go drive? He asked me would I, would I go out and work for him. I said I would, but say the man I'm with. I'll have to give him a fart in his nose. God, he said that'd be a decent thing to do. So I done that and I went to Hinch. That was in 1987. You have since? And I'm there ever since. And how many people were with Hinch at that time? I think when I started off, it was about 80. See, he was big a long time. Oh, my God, he was. At that time, uh, and the way things is after turning around now, at that time, uh, when I went home, we were doing a land reclamation where the farmer had wet land and were drying it. Uh, you'd clean the main drains first. Hmm. Then you come on, he had what was a, a pipe machine. And it run on on a, a GPS system. Back for, in the eighties. For the, yes, on laser beam. For the levels. Good. And uh, it was sort of like a Ford County on tracks. And a big chain running around digging the shore. And the pipe was fed down into plastic pipe was fed down into it. And we'd be coming on then with a chip cart behind. So who taught you how to drive? Like when you went there, you didn't know how to drive a digger, did you? That's, well, you see, I got the tractor experience with Father Jim. So you went to drive a tractor first? I went to drive the tractor first with Father Jim. I got me a provisional license. And then with Hinch driving then tractor. I was tractor. He knew I was tractor driving, and there was tractor driver needed at the land reclamation. You see, ah. so I got to start there, and there was an old JCB I was out with the land reclamation loading the chippings. So I got sort of handy with the JCB. So the land the farmers were getting the grants you see, for draining the land. Yeah. And now look at what's happening. They're wetting the land. You can't win, can you? You can't win. But there's always fucking work for Hinch. But David, it, <laughs> it was great to see the land drain. Yeah. Wet, swampy land. and uh, Turned we, into good land. I'm telling you, putting the shores in, when you? I often seen an 80 millimetre pipe and it'd be full, full flow of water coming over. Really? Oh, God, we did. It'd have, it'd have me flowing through the chippings. And how long would it take for the field to dry up once that would be done? I suppose the following spring. It'd yeah, be great totally difference different land. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But were great men, was great machine men at that time, particularly old fields around the headlands. It'd be a great big old wide bank. Yeah. And the doors of man would come in and he'd pair down that bank all around the whole headland. And the amount of clay he'd get, that would be unbelievable. And did you ever have to work far from home or was it always near home? Most of Hinge's work that time was all around Leash Offaly. Yeah. And you were living at home with your mum at that time, were you? I was, yeah, yeah. And, um, how long before you met your beautiful wife? God, I met the Lord's, um, we're married uh, 30 years last October. Congratulations. Thanks, She's a lovely David. woman. Often and was chatting to her. One of the best, yeah. yeah. You're punching. Oh, I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone tells me that about my wife as well, so I'm going to fucking definitely tell you. <laughs> so we two girls. Where'd you meet the Lord's? Um, I met the Lord's, he up in the Dead Man's in Balafin. The Dead Man's in Balafin? The Dead Man's in Balafin, was that, yeah. What year was that? Uh, we're married in 93, so it was about four years before that. Why were you in Balafin? Jeez, I don't know, I can't think. Did you ramble a lot at different pubs in Yorks? 
Oh, we used to go around. We used to go to Tullamore, go would be all right. Yeah. Just out on the po- to the pubs, or did you follow any bands? Or? Oh, we used to go to the, the Harriers. Yeah. Just I remember one time, uh, we were going to the Harriers, and I met this girl from Kilcormack. She, she was a lovely girl. Oh, Jesus. So I was me here the following week. I was working in Father Jim's now at this time. Mm. And, uh, of course, we used to go down to the meal again, throwing darts and getting a few pints. Then we get Holly Canary's bus. It was 50 pence <laughs> over the Tullamore to the Harriers. And, uh, just we missed the bus. Said we go to Tumman. Tried to go to Tumman, couldn't get the fucking lift. How many were trying to Tumman? There was four of us. At what hour of the night? Sure, she said the bus was the bus used to go around eight o'clock or so, and she we could have stayed till nine or half nine. Jeez, you were hopeful. <laughs> she said, I said to the boys, Jesse, I, I have the tractor at home. <laughs> at the Ford 4000. <laughs> and you took it to the Harrier? Took it to the Harrier. Before we went, we came down to town. We did the town of Cullen, we bought a bottle of Malibu. <laughs> In the tractor, <laughs> I drank the bottle of Malibu raw. We did <laughs> fucking hell <laughs> on the way to Tullamore. On the way to Tullamore, go into Tullamore, and of course, the court hotel wasn't there at the time. And on past that, there was a little petrol station sort of on the right. Just pulled the tractor in there, left it there. Up you walked to the Harriers, not a sign of her. She never, she stood you up, not a sign of her. Fucking That's bitch. the show. And uh, I was too drunk to drive the tractor home. <laughs> well, at least you had the, the sense to leave the tractor where it was. John Delaney drove it home. Another oh. time. Because <laughs> the Harm Demi Oaks would do it 22 mile an hour. <laughs> 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 there wasn't a bottle, uh, uh, a tread or a glass behind it now. No, unfortunately not, no. Fucking but hell. there were great times. Brilliant to work. So you met your wife in the Dead Man's? Yeah. Did you know she was the one that night now, did you? I just sort of did all right now, yeah. Did you though? I did, I think, yeah. Great girl she was, Mabby Leakes. Mabby Leakes woman. So the only bad thing about her was she was from Mabby Leakes? I won't say bad thing, no. It's a great girl she is. And you got married? I got married in 83, yeah. In Mabby Leakes? In Mabby Leakes, yeah. Reception was in the Hazel, on Streppen. Jeez, I remember going to a few weddings in the Hazel. That was a great spot. I want Brilliant to spot, I got it was, yeah. We used to be... It was. Mammy and Daddy used to make us go to the Hazel when Sean used to play there. Oh, yeah. Or if any of the big show bands, yeah. Mammy and Daddy were into the yeah. show bands and stuff. So we'd often be in the Hazel, yeah. sitting in the corner, being told, Stick away! Don't yeah, move! Yeah, yeah. Be good! Yeah. Sean was often down in my mother's house. Was he? And he worked in the hospital of Manic, yeah. Yeah. So your mother worked in... No. I mean, mother, she didn't know. My mother didn't work in the hospital, no. Right, 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 right. But uh, he used to come down. Oh, yeah. And um, there was a postcard at home. I have long to be mother of Sean who's young. Go away. Yeah. That's the age, yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Were you close to your mother? Fierce close to your mother. I got it was. She was everything to me. She was a great woman. Great woman she was, yeah. I was you, only... you told me many a story about your mother. I was only 10 when my father died. Yeah. Yeah. Can you remember that? I do remember, yeah. God, I do. I remember going to Mass with my father and after Mass he used to go up to Horton's shop and he'd win. he used to buy a packet of uh, emerald sweets and two oranges, two big oranges. Yeah. And uh, he was going to the central bar then for a pint. And we go home then down by the river and across the fields, up the back garden. I remember it was only yesterday. Go ahead. Yeah, I even remember some of the some of the men in the pub at the time. I couldn't name them all. And that what was, happened to him? Do you mind me asking? He had a heart trouble. Yeah, he was only 69 when he died. Was it sudden? Uh, he'd had trouble for 13 years. He got in a pacemaker up in Baggett Street in Dublin. Yeah. But I remember the time they told me, mother, that the harm was done before they got him. They were experimenting on him, Port Asian. Left too long and too long. There was nothing they could do then? Nothing they could do. Yeah. She said, that must have been tough. Oh, it was. It was only 10, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. I remember going down and getting her hair cut. He used to go on down the garden, across the fields and up the river. I got to get her, he used to win, get her hair cut, Johnny Lawler, the barber. Now he'd get mine cut. Is it amazing the way you remember things like that? Oh, she's David, yeah. He was so young. Yeah. Fuck. And I suppose when you, when you, when you're younger, when that happens, do you, do you realize how tough it is for your mom 
only when you get older? Or oh, do you so know then? Was. Well, you wouldn't then because you're too young. Yeah. I'm oh, sure it was, yeah. There was six of us in it, you know. And, and, and like, they were all young, so at that time. They were, yeah. And how did she manage her? Um, she had a little job at that time in the St. Paul's School in Mamelli, the Church of Ireland School. And she cleaned out that for years and years. Yeah. Was it that time they were all... Everyone was tough. The world were great people. Never be the like of them. Yeah. Great people they were. Great people. And would your mother have been hard on you now? Like, ah, would she... Sure. No. No? She's no hard to go. Go ahead. And stop, yeah. Great. Yeah. Because some, some people, when... Um, you know, when you're the, the young lad and you're spoiled, you didn't yeah. know the useless cunt. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jezra didn't. No, we go out and work. She got me the job, you know, me. Yeah. Had to. Yeah, go on. Older people are amazing, aren't they? It was great then, yeah. You know, they got going then. And got no car myself for she was delighted. Did she drive? No. <gasps> Never drove, no. There wasn't a night you didn't go over to her. Go away. <gasps> Never. Yeah, it's tough. No, it's 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 very um. You you were so close to your mother for so long. Yeah. And like, how long has she passed away now? She died, and she's eight years gone. Eight years. Yeah, she was love to go for a drive. Just uh, just uh, looking Saturday, around. Saturday evening or that, that. Yeah, she'd love it. Yeah. She she'd love to go for a drive. You'd bring her with her, place her up and working. Did she drink at all? No, wasn't a drinking woman. Remember one time, um, we used to go to the 798 marches. That was great. What's that? that? 798 Rebellion. It was, uh, in 1998 was the 200th anniversary of it. It was yeah. uh, 11 men hung on Mount Medic at that time, and we were celebrating that. It was celebrated in 1898, 1938, 1948, okay. and then 1998. And um remember she came to her, her commemoration ways. The winter time of the year, she was freezing. Freezing it was. And we got her a hot whiskey. I suppose she drank maybe half of it. And she said to the Lord, you may come with me to the tile, I'm taking big steps. <laughs> <laughs> Have you any aunties and uncles after? Um, um, no, they're all, all, all dead. All passed away. All gone, oh yeah. So it's up to you now to, to live on all the old stories. Keep the Fitzgerald name and go on that stage. Yeah. Well, you're doing that well. You have two daughters. <laughs> two daughters, Orla and Emer. And um, they're flying it. They're going great. Orla's down in... Mary I in Limerick, student for primary school teaching. And Staying out? No, she comes home. Does she? Yeah. Home she, birds as well? Home birds. She uh, passed her driving test there four weeks ago. Does she be driving you around now? So she bought her, we got her little car. Did you? She, she drives up and down now, yeah. Well, we helped her to get it. Yeah. Yeah. And Emer's down in St. Pat's in Carlo, studying the social care. So they're getting on great, thank God. Great for them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how come you only had two? I have four. I haven't forbidden you by two. That was it, Deb. We were late starters. <laughs> no, you weren't, were you? We were even no all children for 11 years. Jeez, you were having fun, so. <laughs> what were you doing for 11 years? There you are. <laughs> <laughs> but I could nearly guess. I bet you could. I bet I fucking could. <laughs> um, how did you get into the collecting of the old ties and stuff? God, we did, yeah. Yeah, a lot of stuff. Or did it start off with just stuff that you had yourself? No, we didn't. You didn't have anything like that at all. You wouldn't have had. Um, I suppose you, well, how it started off first, it was to go to the market down in the Thai with uh, poor old Paddy Whale and Mom Lord Mercy on him. It was Sunday morning. And uh, I seen a little pedal car. Jess, I'd love that. And Jess, uh, I bought at the time. I think I gave your man £25 for it. I should have brought it home and it was there for a long time. And uh, just a saw a second one. Then I seen a little little pram and started going from that. And then restoring them? Yeah. Yeah, honest to God, no. And um, how many yokes have you now? You have about two or three vans and trailers worth anyway. It's a shed full of them. I've been hanging out with the roof over the rafters. And I'd still, still buy them. Do you yeah. try to do an up of them more, or, or is it just to have them? Oh, just great doing them up, yeah. And getting little bits for them, what you've been needing. 
of make we make the wheels room and make the little windscreens and all of that. Where do you get stuff for parts? Uh, uh, no, you won't. See, you get them, but uh, they're first expensive. So I'll try and make what I can. I could make the wheels. And when you go to shows and stuff, would many people be trying to sell them off or oh, buy them off you? I'd be always trying to buy. I never sold anything. I sold nothing. Never not on one thing. Johnny, you can't bring them with you. I know, I know. Like if you're not playing with them yeah. and you're fixing them, you're going to run out of, run out yeah. of space for them. Some of them, a lot of them are back from the 60s. Maybe late 50s, 60s. Little pedal cars. And Did you I, have pedal cars when you were young, lad? No, we didn't. Anything? But, uh, I tell you what, we had a, a trolley, timber trolley with four wheels on it. What's that? It was a trolley and it was a front axle. But we had a bit of a rope over it and you'd be up with one knee on it and go on and push it in with the other knee up and down there. <laughs> and you'd be steering with the rope. Sounds dangerous. <laughs> it was great. Everyone had them. What did you get for, What can you remember what you got for, like, any Christmas present that you got, like, from Santi? I remember getting, my mother getting me a little, uh, little tractor and trailer. I often read, and it was broke up in bits. I often read and didn't have it now. Yeah. I remember the plastic lorry I got. And uh, I remember the, the lorry part was broke. All I had left was the trailer. And um, the milkman used to come. Joe McGuire, his name was. And uh, I used to gather the milk bottles and put them into this, uh, go around the table. I thought I was a milkman. The fact <laughs> that they were making noise in it, they pulled it. <laughs> I remember my father put the little axle under the back wheels of it. You're a fair man to remember names. I sure would, yeah. I'm shocking bad for names. Yeah. You're good for names. I'm very, I'm very bad for names. Yeah. But there were great times, David. Do you think they're better than now? Ah, uh, the world are far happier, yeah. What do you not like about now? Times I now. I don't have pressure on people. Everything has to be done today. You know. And money. And <gasps> yeah. Because I remember my father in the garden. It soared from top to bottom. It, everything. You name it. With, with veg and stuff? Potatoes and vegetables, carrots, parsnips, onions, lettuce, strawberries. Strawberries? We did, yeah. Remember well. Yeah, and rhubarb. I remember him digging out the potatoes and making a pit for the potatoes. To work out of them during the year? Yeah, he dig down about six or eight inches down. Wait, how big was your garden? Just with a master, it was it could have been 10 yards wide, and maybe 40, 50 yards, 40 yards long anyway. And did everyone back then do that? Yeah, oh, everyone saw the gardens. Yeah, they did. Just uh, I remember it well. And did and you do that yourself, ever? I've done it for a while, yeah. Got sick of it then? Yeah. I remember, ma'am, cleaning off the spade. It a bit of a slate for cleaning off the spade. Or nowadays, you'd be just trying in the shed. He'd clean it off. There'd be no dirt left on it. And the fork, he used to hang the fork up in the roof. I suppose, afraid I'd get hard. It was <laughs> sprungs on it, you know. What did your father work at? Father, father was a cork man. He left... Left Cork, uh, I'd say late 40s. I moved up to a cousin of his in, in, in Dublin, uh, Tom Mulcahy. He, he was a guard in Dublin, a sergeant in Dublin. He got him a job at John Sis, the builder. And he worked there for a number of years. And then he came down country. He got a, he was to work with a HJK McDermott's. They would have done the very same thing as I'd done when I went to Hinge Land Reclamation. And he stopped in Mount Melly. They come down this way. They were from up around the north somewhere, H.J.K. McDermott. There's some man to remember names. And that's where he met me mother. In Mount Melly? In Mount Melly, yeah. Because she was a Mount Melly woman? Uh, Mount Melly woman, yeah. And then they bought that house? And... Got the house there, yeah. That was it, David, yeah. Fuck. Happy out. Yeah. And uh, what did you do with the house after? House was sold after my mother died. Is that that hard? Ah, sure it was, yeah, yeah. It was, it's a home place, like. Yeah. Fuck. That's fucking mad. Yeah. Do you, would you, uh, would you be, care about your house now? Would you ever think about, oh, Jez, when I die, I don't give a fuck what happens to the house. <laughs> or would you be like, uh, I hope one of the women stay in Yeah, I've got to be would, yeah. Yeah, I've got to be hoped the would, anyway. 
I do I do often wonder when I get older, will I give a fuck what goes out in my house? Or will I how do I how do I know which one gets it? How do you know which one's your favourite? <laughs> <laughs> you'd want to I'm just going to say now To the two girls You'd want to be very good To Johnny now <laughs> you're, you're under scrutiny uh, She wants his left right to them It's the most important thing Isn't it Do you like Christmas? Uh, yeah I always like Christmas Yeah But I did I always like Christmas uh, Do you bake? No Do you cook? Uh, <laughs> on Stephen's Day I would Yeah that's your. That's the that's day you day, have to, because yeah. of all the work your woman's after doing the day before. I would, yeah. And um, did you ever think about leaving the digger work and doing that else? She has a wooden day where I am. I love it. Just love driving the digger. I love where I am on the forestry, uh, nature, the wildlife, lads you meet, the work you're doing. When did you get into the forestry? When did you go from um, the it land? There's about. Uh, I suppose it could be 22, 23 year. You're that long? Yeah. I'd say you didn't like it as much until we came around the place. Oh, what'd you think? Oh. I would reckon. Ah. I, I think that, you yeah. know, the, when you come into the wood and we're there, you go, ah, here it is now. That's when the hardship started. I ah, know, Johnny, come on. <laughs> Don't be fucking shaming us now. Don't be embarrassing me in front of everyone. <laughs> Do you like uh, doing the roads? I just I love it, yeah. I so, love it though, yeah. For anyone that uh, doesn't know, so what Johnny is the rapid response unit. So he comes in, <laughs> and he clears off the roads and he makes drains and makes sure there's no water issues and stuff like that. Uh, but um, maybe it's still though it's a hardened old body. Particularly making a new road from scratch. That's tough. It's very great work though. You, do you rather that? Oh god, I would. It's not rough. So it's lovely, no, no, great to see it there. I often take photographs before and after. Oh, every job I do. Have you got a favourite job that you ever done? Um, uh, well, new roads is great. Just it's great to look back on them. You know, when the vegetation's all up and a hmm. couple of years after, go back down and look at it and to see all your drains are working, your culverts working, you know. Did you know you saved me a fortune there after Christmas? Did you uh, know that? I didn't. I'm delighted I did. Um, you were cleaning off the road there, up in the bullbog. Oh yeah, and there's a big wide part, and you the day I was before, after pulling the trees. The day over. before Johnny was after pulling back all the trees, oh, and the was. very next day I fucking <laughs> went straight <laughs> off the road, straight off the road. Just the they, they hadn't been left in it. There was serious. Row off, row off. I was doing about seventy mile an hour. <laughs> <laughs> it was serious hand on been. a closed road, by the way, and I knew no one was coming in. <laughs> yeah, I was I was tearing out that road every evening. Oh yeah, and um. Yeah, I forgot the traction control was on. She just went fucking stray. And we were just there, imagine, day before, trees. Real nasty fucking yeah. trees. And you were after pulling them out. Old Sally, yeah. Yeah. I was there, Stop. thank you, Johnny. Johnny's <laughs> after fucking saving me again. Mad. Did you ever was... bug to the ring? Yes, I did. Did you ever lose a digger? A few freights already. How bad? Just one more time up at the court. I was digging a track for Dennis Lennon. Oh, Dennis, yeah. And, uh, jeez, uh, I was trying to, tracking up and, and trying to uh, pull myself as well with the digger, yeah. Maybe after catching an old stump and you're pulling, you see the fraud coming out of the stump and you're depending on that stump to get you up or gone back. And if you had looked at the mirror, it would be fraud coming out of your mouth as well. Oh, yes, I Jeez, I got up anyway. And I was delighted to go up and I tracked on a bit. And, uh, Jesus, went another bit. Jesus, next the digger took off. Down she went. Oh, well, me moment is dry <laughs> with fear. It went about just maybe 40 yards, maybe more, and decided to turn. Well, the freight I got was an after. And all you can do is hold on. Oh, that's all I got. And the stuff started coming up in front of the grag, the windscreen. And it just about got stopped anyway. And I tried to slow, I couldn't slow, tried to track back. Tracking and nothing. I was stuck in the book in the ground and I dig a bit of a hole. This old white rail, white. I think he me one time it, it was, he called it chalk. It oh, that, as, that white shy It care, was as slippy. white as anything. And it, it fills up everything. Jesus, there's never seen the lake of it. So I've only bugged uh, once. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to keep going on down through the trees to try and get out of it. Just keep going. That's all I could do. Well, that's not bugged. 
And just the fair freight to have it. Yeah, but Johnny, that's not bogged, right? Did you ever have to get pulled? Not so much, no. Oh, well, then that's Why's fucking it? fair work. What about knocking off tracks? Oh, that had happened regular already. That's yeah. Finch's fault. If you had them no. tight, they wouldn't come off. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like getting new gear? And uh, not for of minding and keeping on it. So, would you rather get a second hand job? I would. I got two new ones, I think, in my time, yeah. I got a, a Cat 4 to 8 wheel digger in 1998. And then I got the Komatsu 130. That was a great little digger. Are you a Komatsu man? Because I loved that when I was on that. But uh, high touch, you know, you can't be a great machine. So, if I was to ask you what's your favorite digger, you would say? Well, I, I never had done much on the Hitachi till I have what I have now. Because I was on an old Dawson. Day Wu. Are they shy? Ah, oh, balls of it. Really? Balls but of Lack it. of power? Or just soft? The old Day Wu, it was a big old six cylinder engine, an animal and diesel. Big old animal in York. Johnny, it's not your diesel. That doesn't matter, is really. it? Throw it away. You have to look on every aspect of it. That's a, That's how you know it'll be a good lad. That's well, how sure. you know. <laughs> you're, you're, no, you're, you're worrying about yeah. someone else's diesel. Well, sure. You try and do it the best you can, don't you? Do you see many young lads coming in at it now? I'm not going into forestry, you know. No. No. Why is that, do you think? I'd say... I'd say the... The quietness of it. They wouldn't stay there. They want to be on sites and they want to be where there's lorries or tractors and dump trailers going on. Yeah, you have to like your own company, yeah, don't you? you do. You do. Because most of the time you are on your own. No, a lot of the time, yeah. yeah. Did you ever uh, get attacked by a deer? No. They got bad though now, weren't they? There are a lot of deer out there, yeah. Did you ever shoot? No, I never shot, no. Did you ever eat some? Uh, Venison? I, I did once, I think, yeah. Didn't like it? No, I wouldn't be love for it, no, at all. Did you ever eat it? Yeah. Did you like it? Yeah, was fine. Yeah. Everton. Yeah. <laughs> Matt has two rounds of golf done today. Tell well me done, that. Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, lads. I was, out, I was out the door as quick as that. <laughs> I, I fucking felt bad. Poor old Johnny. I, 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 you, you have a bad old hip. Yeah, if you get the old hip done, yeah. Get the old hip done. And um, I felt bad then. Two flights of stairs on the way up. Ah, it was no butter. Sick. How get the old fucking hip done, is it? Ah, uh, it is, yeah. To, to tell you, it's not bad enough. And really? Yeah, it was... Health systems about all. Then it lasts, as they said, only lasts for 10 years. It'll be getting done again in 10 years, you know. 10 years is a long time. It is, yeah. You wish you could get it done. And yeah. Did you ever have an operation? Never, no. Were you ever under anesthetic? No. Never? <gasps> no, Jesus, was no. Did you get sick much? Um, oh, I'm wearing old cold or the flu or something like that, it's that. What's the longest you were ever out of work? Did you ever hurt yourself and have to stay out of work? No. You're a real old school guy, aren't you? <laughs> I'd yeah, say if yeah. you, I'd say you'd, you'd crawl to work, would you? Oh, I would. Yes, I would, yeah. Is it because you love your job or you're just that old school kind of guy? That's just, you, you were always well, like, like that. You feel that I was someone waiting or someone to want something done and I would like letting them down. I'd go on anyway. You've never let me down, Johnny? No, no. I told you before, never fear for Cheryl is here. Cheryl is here. And if in doubt, Give him a shout. Give me a shout. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever, uh, do you know the way when I started doing videos, did it ever annoy you? Or did, did Jason, you're not in a boat, David. I didn't know what you're at until um, this Christmas anyway. I met uh, Chris Koss, who's home from Australia. He said to me, uh, just to see you, he says, on David Cuddy's video, his last night. And the name rang the bell. I said, what's he talking about? She said, he said nothing anyway. So I don't just tell that maybe after a half an hour. I said, oh, what are we talking about, Chris? He says, he makes videos, he said. And you were on it, he said. <laughs> oh, where is he? He says, you were. She says, I couldn't believe it at all. You know, I, I, I don't think, I says, uh, I said to you one day, I'm just going to put you up on my Snapchat, do you mind? You didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you must have thought I was just going to send it to one of the lads or something. I, uh, and then it was only a month later, you go, you fucking, how many people are looking at that? <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't mind at all, no. That's good old crack. Yes, it is. And uh, your your daughters be keeping an eye on you as well. No, they're two great girls, yeah. Yeah. 
busy out. Did you help you doing that when you went to the truck show? You brought up all the stuff. Oh, it would, yeah. To come to that now, all right, yeah. I was amazed that um, when you brought up all the old ties, and these are really old school ties. Yeah. The chaps love them. I want you to vote, yeah. And you'd think that they wouldn't care because they're all yeah. into, but they love these real yeah. old cats. I was delighted to see them going over, and I'd always leave a pedal car out and let small children get into them. The parents would take a photograph or something like that, you know. Yeah. It's lovely to have, like, and you look back on it. There was no health and safety when they were making them. No, Rachel wasn't, no. There was like steel, like just steel yeah. little pins. Or when I was a it's young man. It's all like tin plate and there was mm. no plastic. Yeah, no plastic. This was all before the plastic. Yeah. Like they weigh a ton. I, when when we and Garrett were young lads, we got these two little Knight Rider cars. They were these two pedal cars, so they were plastic, but they had this metal mechanism that you, you pedaled like this. Yeah. But it was metal. And I got my toe caught in it. I took the whole fucking top off my toe. Reefed me. Yes. And it wasn't, oh, this is horrific. You better sue him. It was like, you fucking eagle, pawn your shoes. <laughs> pawn your fucking shoes. Mm. That day I done the, the show for, um, for Barry. Mm. Your mother was up that Sunday. And there was one little pedal car I had, the blue one. And she says, um, Sean Michael. Had one. Had one the same as that, she said. Yeah. She, yeah. Told, she told me that already. Yeah. But that's going back. What is Sean? Sean's older than you, it's. Oh, yes, he is, yeah. Where did you again? I was born in 68. Yeah, Sean's older than you. Yeah. Did you remember Sean when he was a young lad? I remember Sean when he was working in the hospital of Melly. You, you remember that? <gasps> yeah, I kind of do. Can you remember when he started singing and doing... I do. Yeah, I'll tell you what I remember now. Were you laughing at him or were you... No, there was a, a cousin of mine, Tommy Good, who used to do a... Take your pick. What's that? There was like a, this box and there was 13 small boxes in it. And there was a raffle. You bought tickets. Okay. He was having the pub. Hmm. And there was a jackpot, maybe 300 euro, 400 euro, whatever. And the other spot prizes, right? you should guess what number the jackpot is in. Hmm. And we say it was in number five. You guess five. He try and bid you for it then. Okay. Okay. So he went, could go up to heaven. Just to complicate the whole thing. Yeah. So then if uh, <clears throat> he goes so far, and he, you, he'll ask him, you open the box. He'll open the box, and it could be a teddy bear in it. <laughs> or it could be could have been the jackpot. But I remember Sean used to play for him. I think your sister. Martina and Used Elizabeth to play the piano. Piano, yeah. I remember that down in Packy Card Lounge in Kilcormuck. Why did you go to Kilcormuck so much? From a medic. <laughs> oh, I know. That's uh, this is a good question now, but that's where he used to have to take a big and he was to go down with him and uh, get a few bob for doing, doing the night with him. Did you ever do bouncing? No, no. I often done the old door for Tom Cullen in the meeting. There was a cover charge going in, taking money off people, taking money off of people. Correct. What would the cover charge be? It was only a pound. Give me your pound. <laughs> pound that, was yeah. it pound kind or, or was it pound kind? Yeah, yeah, yeah pound kind. The one yeah. with the deer on it. No. no, the deer was a twenty-five pence coin, wasn't it? The deer was a, the twenty twenty cents was a, a horse, wasn't it? The one that had the five, uh, it was a hexagon shape. Is that not twenty-five? No, that's fifty. The, it was fifty. Yeah, the big one. That I had. That I don't have the deer. No. Look it up, Matt. Yeah, Google. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the pound kind was a deer, a deer with big antlers on it. She's like, I can't think, no, whatever. And the amount of them you're after making, Johnny. I don't know about that. Johnny, if I had your money, I'd burn me on. What do you think? Yeah. Jesus, Dev. You wouldn't go far with mine. Johnny, if you could go back in the morning, what would you have liked to have done other than drive a digger? Is there any other job you would have liked to have done? Uh, I'd say... Education. In what respect? Maybe uh, had, had had a good schooling and got a good good job. You know. Would you regret that? I won't regret it, but it would have been nice. You know, as, as you look back. Yeah. You know. Everyone always looks back though. Yeah, I don't think about it, but just when you ask the question, yeah, you know, 
Mm, you were spot on. Hold on for a minute. Hold on for a minute. Let's just say I very this. rarely say this to you. This never <laughs> happens. So we're going to just highlight this. Is there any music you can put on this post? Post editing. Just to highlight this. Yay! I have been right. Look, the pound kind is a big deal. <laughs> yeah, the poont. <laughs> The 50p is a fucking big pointy bird. It's a big pointy bird. Uh, 20 horse. pence is a horse. Salmon then. And the oh, look, and it's a salmon. How do you know it's salmon? Because it's because of the, knowledge, the salmon and knowledge, isn't it? So what's the... But these are two 10 pence. I don't know. One small, one big. <laughs> and then, and the, then the squiggly ones. And there's two fives as well. Though. Yeah, there's two yeah. fives. Yeah. Fuck, I, do you know what? <laughs> I am old because I can remember them. I have a hate of them at home. Why? Uh, my mom worked for, or still does, working in the cash office in pennies. Hold um, on now. She wasn't robbing them now or nothing, but she just had change and stuff. She's bringing them. home all the cash. <laughs> <laughs> Cut you out, robber. <laughs> we'll edit this bit out. <laughs> oh, that's bad. There's a, yeah, there's a, there's a change bag at home in a drawer, even after we moved house and all, with the old coins in them. Oh, Jesus. Mm. That's mad. They are. And, um, the length of time that you're working with Hinch. Yeah. How many times has the, like, has the structure of the way it works change? Like, when you were working there first, you were working for the, the boss man. Does it get to a stage when you're working with a big company like that, there's just loads of bosses? Or does it still stay the same? You're just dealing with the one couple yeah, of people all the time. Uh, well, for me, things hasn't really changed. You know, it just, I was working in the forestry when Finn Hinch was there. Then Trevor took over. I was still on the forestry and they just let me run on and do whatever has to be done. If I need a lorry, you ring them up. They'd send it on or pipes or anything was needed. Is it easier now under service? Like w w when you started at the forestry, there would have been no mobile phones, wouldn't there? No. So you had to organize everything the day That's before. Right. It was all concrete pipes, 12 inch pipes and 18 inch pipes. Fucking hard to put in a minute. Yeah. It's plastic yeah. pipes, they're weak. Like it's yeah. real delicate. And these are delicate hands. Yeah, the Galway pipe's a great pipe. They're thicker plastic. Yeah, great pipe. What are the ones now? They're like paper. They're yeah. I've seen them throwing them down off the lorry, but just at break. Yeah, they're, they're, they're that bad. Yeah, that won't happen to Galway pipe, though. Shout out to the Galway pipe. Yeah, they're a great pipe. By far. Johnny, you ready for the all important questions? You've never heard these, have you? Look at the, the fear in his, he is pure fear. I do these every week. I do these every week. And if I didn't do these with Joe, people would be freaking out, right? So you ready? Come on. Don't think about him too much now, right? Uh, what's your first vivid childhood memory? Um, I suppose going to school. Your first day, like? I remember, uh, it wouldn't be my first day now, I remember going to school in the old school bag and, and now I remember in school you used to get soap. Soap in school? Yeah, it was Topins. You had to pay for it? For a mug of soap. Who made uh, it? Mrs O'Neill. It was always Sippy Sippy. remembers all the names? It was a Sippy Sippy Tony. He was a grandson. <laughs> because Johnny, I can't, I can't believe the names you. that you have in your head. Yeah. Uh, 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 Mrs. O'Neill and Tony's granny can now give us an extra slice of bread. <laughs> uh, how many people were in your class? I suppose it was, what was it, could be 15 or maybe, maybe a little way. I remember a great teacher, we had Joey Defio. <laughs> but he was an out no gentleman. A gentleman he was. What made him a gentleman? In um, your eyes? Just he was great. He used to, he used to have raffles. And uh, he'd buy bags of sweets and he'd put a little slot in the bag of sweets and could put 50 pence, 50 pence into the bag of sweets. We'd all get one. A gentleman he was. That was fierce nice. Yeah, fierce gentleman. Fuck. Joey was he Diffio. an old man at that time? He was, yeah, yeah. What's the most painful thing you've ever been told? Um... Just I had painful things. I suppose, well, I don't know if I've ever been told, but I know the worst pain I ever had was gout. Well, that's pain. <laughs> yeah. 
Do you know that's the second time I've been talking about gout in the last two weeks? There's a, a, a friend of mine, Don Curtin, suffers with gout. What, what, what way is that work or what happened? It's a, too much protein in your... Like eggs is 100% protein. Fish is protein. You know, tomatoes. The acid in it. Who's it? Sorry. Go check. Um... What's the most painful thing you've ever been told emotionally? I was supposed to say my mother had cancer. Was it cancer? My mother had, yeah. What age was she? Mother was 82. She, she was a good age. Yeah. Great woman. Yeah. Um, if you could make one... Well, this is going to be an easy one to, to do. If you could make one phone call to heaven, who would you call? Oh, my mother. What would you say to her? Back, man. Yeah, that's a, that makes sense. Is home for you a place or a feeling, Johnny? I like me home, yeah. Got it all. Can you remember when you bought it? I can. How long were you in your home before the little ones came? Or did you have the little ones? Well, we were married 30 years last October. And we had the house about a year before we got married. Jesus, you were well ahead of the we game. Bought it. It, was a, it was an old house, yeah. We bought it and done it up. Can you remember the first day you went into it? Moved in? I first know. night you stayed yeah, in it? I got it all. Yeah. You probably remember the name of the person that helped you move in. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we helped a lot ourselves. I think we're trying to done, done a lot of work ourselves on it. Uh, would you like yourself if you met yourself? I suppose I'd have to. You'd have to? Why wouldn't you? <laughs> uh, what's something that you're holding on to that you need to let go? Jesus, it's not heaven. That a hard one? I suppose it is, yeah. Um, if you had to ans- ask one person a question and they had to answer truthfully, no matter what the question was, what would you ask and who? Jeez, you're hard on me now. <laughs> it's a good question though, isn't it? It is a good question. You're hard on me. You'll be thinking about that question tomorrow. I will. And you'll go... And I could be thinking about it for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you think things happen for a reason? Or do we find thing- reasons for things to happen? There's just something that always happens for a reason. Do you believe in God? I do. Would you be very religious now? Do you go to Mass every week? Uh, near enough. God, I would, yeah. Yeah. You and the wife? I would, yeah. Can you remember getting your first Holy Communion? I can. Can you remember your first confession? <laughs> I can't, no. Johnny, you're surprising me there. I thought you were going to tell me the name of the priest. No. What you fucking said. What your little sins were at the time. So we're probably terrified going into it. Robin, the teacher sweets are taking extra bread at the, at the school. Um, do you trust anyone with your life? Jeez. Actually, you have to trust. You have to. You do. Yeah. Even though people let you down a lot, don't they? Oh, they do. Uh, when was the last time you shit yourself? <laughs> Jesus. I ask everyone that. <laughs> this must be your last question. Well, it's one of them. <laughs> I should be getting old freights up and down, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Why does everybody always think that's what that means? I know, I know. What uh, do you think it means? Well, think but, but, either that or I got it really wrong the time you asked me and set a trend, but I started telling David about being too drunk one night and shit myself in a bathtub. <laughs> yeah, and he does it every weekend now. He loves yeah. it. Uh, what do you want to be known for when you die? Um, I suppose if I ever worked, I do. When I love me work. I think a terrible lot about it. Yeah. I bet you couldn't imagine not working. I bet you couldn't imagine retiring and doing nothing every day. 
Jesus. I often say I will retire and... But you'd probably go mad. You'd find something there, wouldn't you? What would you do? I should... Like, like if if you weren't working in the morning, would you just stay fiddling with the ties and doing them up or... You'd no, miss the digger. You'd probably meet different people in the same line of work. So you don't meet many in, in forestry work, you know yourself. Mm. It's the one few buys the whole time. But the quality of the lads that you do meet, Johnny. Oh, Lord, you don't have to tell me. Johnny, would you <laughs> would you think now, now, look, you don't have to tell me, right? You can just give me a look and I'll know. Who do you think the best operators are? Uh, I knew you were going to talk ah. that one. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think the most... You know, talented would be. <laughs> and you want me to say, oh, David Cody. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> I let it in. <laughs> I want to tell you, Dave, you're a good one. I always say that. Thanks a million, Johnny. Really appreciate that. <laughs> Johnny, thanks a million for coming on. No oh, bother, I know Dave, it yeah. wasn't. A, uh, you, it's yeah. not a thing that you were comfortable doing. Well, I suppose the last few questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's maybe the worst. But I wouldn't, I'm not, I wasn't going to be hard on you, but like lo- so many people asked me to get you on. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So many people. Yeah. You're a loved man. Actually, yeah. Try and do the best you can for everyone. And most people that have worked with you and anyone that has nothing got to do with you has nothing but height respect for you. Oh, thanks, Dave. It's good to know that. Well, um, thanks, Mary, for coming on. You're more than welcome. And I'll see you yeah. in the long grass. It's a great time for you, Dave, and, and the lads. Thanks a million. Yeah, Johnny, mind yourself. Thanks, Dave. Good luck. Thanks a million. Hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, remember, if you want to support the podcast, go to patreon.com forward slash Deadwood from the trees and uh, yeah, I'll see you again next week.